Hello everyone, welcome to the competitive learning. As we had informed earlier, we are going to start with the PUC NEET biology section. And of course, I had posted it before also that we'll starting with the second PUC syllabus first. Of course, first PUC also will be done parallelly. But today, we are starting with the second PUC. And that too, we are going to start the most interesting and very important unit of the second PUC. That is class 12th. The unit is genetics and evolution. Yes, you heard me right. That particular unit has got a very high weightage in the board examinations as well as in the NEET sections. Each and every concept will be taught which is being given in the NCRT and along with the NCRT, you will also be studying some other concepts which are very much required to crack any medical entrance examination. Of course, NCRT, line by line, the NCRT will be done. And along with that, some higher concepts which are required to crack the entrance examinations will also be done in the video. I'll be giving the classes using pen and paper so that you should have a Someone is teaching you personally. After the chapter, we will be solving around 200 to 300 questions from every chapter. Yes, you heard me right. You will be solving around 200 to 300 questions, which includes all the previous year questions and some questions of our own will also be solved at the end of every chapter. So guys, please stay connected with us. These are really beneficial for you. And of course, very soon, the first year classes will also come up. So without wasting any time, we shall start with the classes. The first unit we are going to start is the genetics and evolution. And among the three chapters in that unit, we'll be starting principles of inheritance and variations today. So guys, here is the first topic, principles of inheritance principles of inheritance and variation and the branch of biology which deals with these two words that is the inheritance and variation is called as the genetics so what is genetics genetics is the branch of biology which deals with the inheritance and variation the term genetics okay this term genetics was coined by a person named w F. bateson these names are very very important so genetics was used by w F. bateson for the first time in the year 1905 so very commonly we define genetics as the study of science which deals with inheritance and variation. In other terms, we can also describe that genetics is the science which deals with heredity, heredity and variation. So, heredity is nothing but the transmission of characteristics from one generation to another generation. So, I will write it here. Heredity, it is transmission of transmission of characters transmission of characters from one generation one generation to other generation or in other terms we can say that from parent generation to offspring generation then how about the variations so variation simply means that differences okay differences among the individuals the individuals of the same species of the same species or in other terms you can also say that variation is the differences 
among the offsprings of the same parents. So one just example if I can quote here is, if you compare parents, okay, let's imagine there are parents that is there is a female parent and there is a male parent okay and this parent they have three children okay they have three children so let's speak about offspring one offspring two offspring three i'm writing the shortcuts here so now when people look at these three offsprings or these three children of these parents or this couple, they say that children, for example, if it is the children one, the child one, or oh, this child one is almost same to his to her his mother. If you think the child one is a boy, then this boy is almost same to the mother, or this boy is almost same to his father. So this word same that this boy looks the same to his father or mother. So this same is because he has got the characteristics. Okay. The characteristics are transmitted from this parent to this child. That is what the heredity means. I repeat it again. The characteristics are transferred from parents to the offspring. That is why this offspring or this child is looking like the parent. That is what we call it as heredity. At the same time, this child is not an exact copy of the parent. This, this child is looking like his, like his father or his mother. But he is not 100% similar to his father or mother. Isn't it? There is a difference. When compared to his parents as well as if you consider these three children. These three children all of them look like either their mother or their father. They are similar to their parents but none of them are 100% copies of their parents or none of them are same to each other. These offsprings are different as compared to each other. That difference is called as the variation. They look like their parents that is because of the heredity. Here they are all different when compared to each other that is because of the variation. Speaking about these two words that is heredity and variation. This heredity should be dealt in very very detail as compared to your syllabus. So coming to the variations it is a quite smaller topic. So we will first complete the variations and then we will move to the heredity which is the entire chapter itself. So first what is variation? We have seen variation is differences among the individuals of the same species or in other words I told that it can also be called as the differences between the children of the same parents can also be called as the variation. Now what are the types of the variations? So we have already seen what is the definition of the variations. So this is the types of the variations. Okay. So the first type here is somatic, somatic variations. This is the first type. Then second type of the variation is germinal variation. Germinal variation or germinal variations. Moving to this somatic variations first. So as the name suggests these are usually seen in the somatic cells of an organisms and they are called as the modifications or they are also called as the acquired characteristics. They are called as the acquired characteristics. For the germinal variations they are also called as the blastogenic variations blastogenic variations 
these somatic characteristics these are usually acquired by an individual during its lifetime and they can be mainly caused because of the three factors so the first uh, the first factor which is causing the somatic variation is so the first one is the environmental factor environmental factor this is the first one see the environmental factors uh, such as the light temperature nutrition wind and water they can bring about the changes in the plants as well as the animals so i repeat the factors such as light temperature nutrition nutrition wind and water supply wind and water supply so they can bring about the changes in the plants and animals this is the first factor then moving to the second factor that is use and disuse of the organs use and disuse of organs see the continuous use of the organ make them stronger whereas if an organ is disused then the disuse make them weaker one best example which we had seen is the giraffe example isn't it in our school days we had seen this giraffe example wherein giraffe had the uh, very short necks so once all the short trees were completed then the giraffe started stretching its neck because of which the next generations giraffes were all with the long necks isn't it so that is because it was completely or it was used more and more the stretching of neck was the more and more so the neck was used again and again it was stretched again and again so use and disuse of the organs can also make the variations then another one is the conscious efforts conscious efforts see these conscious efforts can be seen only in the or only in those animals which have intelligence or uh, which have ability to think but however these usually don't move more from one generation to another generation for example see a person who is very much conscious about his body builds his body in a very fantastic way so that slim body can be taken as an example for this conscious efforts then moving on to this germinal variations so they are inherited variations which are formed mostly in the germinal cells i hope you already know what is the somatic cell and what is a germinal cell the cells which are involved in the reproduction are called as the germinal cells and other cells are called as the somatic cells so these variations are the one which are either already present in the ancestors or they develop as the new due to the mutations and then pass on to the next generation and there are two types of the germinal variations the first one is continuous variation continuous variation so continuous means these are fluctuating variations they keep on fluctuating so may, this is mainly due to the race or variety okay race variety and species so they keep on changing continuously so uh, com a continuous fluctuating okay it is continuous fluctuating then one more second type of the variation here is the discontinuous discontinuous variations so these are the mutations which are very sudden see these continuous are they gradually keep on mutating mutating and one fine day we will get to know the result 
but whereas in case of the discontinuous variations so these are sudden variations okay or kind of unpredictable they are okay the sudden variations or unpredictable variations are called as the discontinuous variations so most of the time the variations which we see in various species is almost of the discontinuous variation so we don't see this kind of gradual variations usually so this is very rare or quite rare the discontinuous variations are more so there will be sudden variation in a generation which can be seen so such variations are called as the discontinuous variations so there are two types of variations okay so this is an flow chart for the types of variations somatic and germinal variations so now if you think why these variations are actually important so what is the need of the variations see first importance is that the variations will actually make an organism to adapt for the various environmental changes so first importance is it will give a chance or it will make an organism it will make an organism to adapt to adapt better to adapt better to the environment to the environment this is the first importance then second importance is they are required they are required for struggle struggle for existence struggle for existence so we all know that as in there are adaptations or as in there are variations coming on so the organism becomes better and better and we all know that in a group whichever organism has better characteristics will survive isn't it so it is very important in the struggle for existence and then one more very important is individuality it provides okay it provides individuality so what is this individuality see let's imagine there are three offsprings if all the offsprings are same then what is the point there isn't it if there are slight differences then that gives the difference among the offsprings which is making them and separate individual and unique individual okay and then they help breeders okay they help breeders so as in there are more variations so that will give more options for the breeding of better varieties then another one is they help in they help in speciation they help in speciation speciation is creating of new species okay if the variations are seen then definitely the organism which has got the variation will stand separate when compared to the group isn't it so next that variation that variated variety will give other offsprings as compared to the other members of the group and that will form a new species okay so this is all about the variations so we have seen what is variations types of variations and then the importance of the variations so in the next class we will take what is heredity as well we will see a bit of history about how the genetics developed thank you